Good morning, everyone. It's good to be with you. Uh, as we're all aware, in the last few months, every effort has been made to keep the COVID-19 reproduction number, the R rate, below one. This is because if the R rate increased above one, we would all be in great trouble. So if, for example, one person with the coronavirus infection had passed the virus on to two people, and the next day those two people had passed it on to two more people, and the next day those, two, uh, those four people had passed it on to eight and so on, within 10 days, over 1,000 new people would have had the virus, and in just 20 days following the same pattern, more than 1 million people, new people, would have had the coronavirus. No wonder the government and the health service were frightened at such a, a prospect, and no wonder every effort was made to keep the R rate below 1, so that the effect of the virus, the infection, would be decreasing rather than increasing. Had it increased in the way they imagined, then tens of thousands would have become ill and or been in hospital and a significant number would have died. In our Bible readings today, exactly the same type of reproductive explosive potential is ascribed to the seed of the Word of God. In Isaiah 55, we heard from Georgia that when God speaks a word, it has the power to produce a great harvest in the same way that the rain, the soil and the seed combine to produce a natural harvest. We heard as the rain and snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. In our Gospel reading, which Tony brought to us in Matthew 13, the Lord Jesus also highlights the potential contained in the seed of the gospel of the kingdom to produce a huge harvest. Jesus said, uh, but the seed falling on good soil refers to the one who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop a hundred, sixty or thirty times what was sown. And we uh, have to know that an R rate of 100 is incredibly powerful and will produce a huge harvest. Such potential that Jesus spoke about became reality in the Testament book of Acts of Apostles, where the power of the Word of God, combined with the power of the Holy Spirit, caused the early church to experience incredible growth. On the day of Pentecost, 120 disciples became 3,120 and soon 5,000 more were added until the number became too great to count. To quote Acts chapter 6 verse 7, so the word of God spread, the number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. Or at the end of Acts chapter 12, but the word of God continued to spread and flourish. This phenomenon was described by the vicar of Chalfont St. Peter, a man called Roland Allen, in a book that he published in the year 1911. He called it the spontaneous expansion of the church. As the Lord pointed out in Matthew chapter 13, of course, the process of expansion and multiplication can be hindered and thwarted by various factors, including misunderstanding, uh, demonic interference, trouble, testing, worry and wealth. What Jesus said very clearly was, when good seed falls into good soil, there will be a substantial harvest. There can be no doubt that the Word of God 
will accomplish the purpose for which the Lord sent it. But today I want to take a couple of steps back from that process by focusing on a, a short sentence at the beginning of Matthew chapter 13, the very beginning of the parable which Jesus told, where he said, a farmer went out to sow his seed. A farmer went out to sow his seed. So if we know there's nothing wrong with the seed of God's word, and we know that when good seed falls, falls into good soil, the harvest is, uh, is possible and achievable. This uh, parable begins a couple of steps back where Jesus reminds us that for the uh, harvest to be produced, the soil has to be there and the seed has to be planted. And sowing seed is a task undertaken by a farmer. So I've got three short encouragements for us today based on that sentence. Farmer went out to sow his seed. And the first sentence or the first heading is the farmer knows. So just to be clear, I'm not talking about the farmer's nose, like the nose at the front of his face. I'm talking about the fact that the farmer knows, he, he understands. And uh, as we know, farming isn't just a nine to five job or a career that you dip in and out of before moving on to something else. Pretty much it's been passed on from the previous generation. It's been a lifelong experience. It's a vocation and it will be passed on to the next generation. So by training and life experience and eventually instinct, the farmer knows some things pretty well. First of all, he knows the land. He's a farmer in general terms, but actually he's a, a farmer on a specific piece of land that's probably belonged to his family for generations. So he knows the contours of the fields. He knows the places, the parts of the farm that tend to be very wet or very dry. He knows the places that are exposed to the wind or the places where it's sheltered. He's, he's at one with the land. And then the farmer knows the seasons, so he lives in a different way maybe than we do through winter, spring, summer and autumn, understands of cold and heat, of frost and scorching sun, of seed time and harvest. And then even more specifically than knowing the seasons, the farmer understands the weather, is very much attuned to the weather, can, can sense the approaching of rain, and uh, spends his life observing the red sky at night or the red sky in the morning, uh, a factor which Jesus referred to on at least one occasion. So in the same way, I am suggesting this morning that we at St. Paul's are called to be like the spiritual farmer, that we would know and understand the land, the seasons and the weather. We, we've got a land given to us, which we, we call the parish, and, uh, and it's our blessing and our challenge to really know the parish. Actually, there are quite significant differences between uh, Hollybush and, uh, and Red House, uh, between Goms Mill and the Langland Road Estate and so on, the different parts of our parish. And those differences are multiplied uh, even more around the city and beyond. And we're aware that different means different uh, factors, different keys might unlock different parts of the parish. And then we're called to be aware of the spiritual season because as Ecclesiastes says, there's a time to sow and a time to reap. Knowing what to do at each season is vitally important. Uh, there's no use trying to uh, sow seed when the, the land is hard with frost and snow. It's no use trying to weed when it's, when it's harvest time. And then we're called to know the spiritual temperature, which, uh, which is changing, has changed all around us in the last few weeks and months. COVID-19 has changed the way that people are thinking and feeling. Some are, are fearful and depressed, some very cautious. Many are open, more open to spiritual things than they used to be. Uh, people watching Christian meetings such as this one when it goes onto the website, the numbers of people has increased greatly from anything that used to be in the past. 
the number of the sale of Bibles is at an all time high. There seems to be a spiritual hunger of which we, if we're going to be good farmers, will be aware of the land, the season and the temperature. And then the second heading would be the farmer goes because a farmer knows, but then a farmer goes. Um, I grew up in a farming uh, community and I well remember the, the comfort and warmth of the farmer's kitchens. And uh, they were not perhaps quite in the league of Steve and Sue Goodwin's kitchen, but not far off with the ardour and the, and the uh, warmth of the welcome. And then we'd go into the workshops, which were always full of uh, gadgets and implements. But the farmer, much as he might have liked to live his life in the kitchen, in the warm or in the tool shed, actually he lived his life on his feet or on the old tractors that we used to use because to fulfill his purpose, to produce a harvest, to uh, keep body and soul together, to stay in business, the farmer's life had to be out on the land. And uh, every day there was something to do outside. And at certain times of the year, most especially harvest time, I remember spending hours and hours and hours with the farmers out on the fields because in that little window of weather in late August, early September, um, when the weather was favourable, it was all hands to the deck. And in fact, the food and drink used to be brought out to us in the fields because there was no time to spare to go back and sort of have an afternoon nap. It was all hands to the deck. The farmer had to spend his life in the field. So I'm suggesting then that St Paul's is, is called to engage in the field of the parish. Thankfully, over the last couple of years, um, the whole area has been systematically prayer walked and each house in the parish has been given a pack with the uh, little wooden cross and the Lord's Prayer. Uh, we're grateful for open house that's been established and uh, we're thankful to Ian and Fiona for the job they do with the um, St Paul's Facebook page and uh, website and thankful that an online alpha course is about to begin and uh, in a different way we're aware that the coronavirus has until now literally locked us out of the building but as we prepare to go back to the church building um, this is not a time to withdraw into the building to, ex to the exclusion of the parish. We have to find new ways of going to the people, of engaging with the people. And maybe we're going to need hitherto unimagined ways to do it. I'm not sure that I know how that will be, or even if it's my place to suggest how it would be. But I do sense the Lord is encouraging us, if we're going to reap a spiritual harvest, if we're going to see the R rate of the gospel spread throughout the parish, we, we have to engage, we have to go, we have to listen, we have to speak. And then thirdly, that the farmer sows. With all that he knows, he's going out into the field and now he's sowing the seed. So as springtime arrives, the farmer's sowing the seed. And uh, in the biblical story we heard, he's, he's scattering it by hand and he's doing it very generously, uh, indiscriminately, in the sense that some will even go to the edge of the field or to the hard stony places and so on. For the farmer, sowing seed is, is an effort. It takes time and it's, it takes money and it's, it's a risky thing. It's an investment because there's no guarantee that the harvest will be, will be full. The only certainty is that if he doesn't sow the seed, there will be no harvest at all. So here's an encouragement to us to, to sow the seed of the word of God, or as Jesus put it in Matthew 13, to it's the seed is the message about the kingdom of heaven. So, Sowing spiritual seed is nothing less than announcing the kingship of Jesus and making known the wonderful news of his life and death and resurrection and ascension 
and exaltation. And this is our call to sow the seed of the word of God throughout the parish in the hope of a, of a spiritual harvest. Proclaiming Jesus as king is, is a true statement because the whole of the Bible, Old Testament pointing to it, the gospel explaining it, and the rest of the New Testament celebrating it, the whole of the scriptures points to the truth of the fact that Jesus is king. Sowing that seed, pronouncing Jesus as king, is a spiritual statement because it's recognised by angels and demons from a different point of view. Gospel proclamation is spiritual work. We're engaging in spiritual work when we do it. And it's a challenging statement, a political statement, because if Jesus is king, it means that no other uh, king or emperor or president or prime minister or councillor has the final authority, but everyone must bow at the name of Jesus. Some people find this extremely challenging and there can be a negative response to the proclamation. So in conclusion, this morning we celebrate the explosive power and potential of the seed of the word of God, the good news of the gospel of the kingship of Jesus. We thank God that wherever the seed is sown, it will make an impact. And if the soil is good, there will be a huge harvest. And now we receive the challenge to know the parish in which God has placed us, to go out and engage with the people, and by prayer, word and deed, to sow the seed of the kingdom of God in confident expectation of a harvest in God's good time. Amen.